Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next war recap video, and this is the one that was against war whales. Um, if you guys thought, watched the last video, you saw how it ended, and it did not go our way, 82 to 80. Um, good job to war whales. We definitely wanted to win this war. There were a lot of former uh, OHG members on the other side, and uh, we wanted to kind of assert ourselves as uh, the, the dominant clan in this war, but it didn't quite happen. Uh, was still a fairly close war. Um, just going through the bases real quick. Um, they did a pretty good job. I mean, our Town Hall 9s were three-starred. I don't think they used many dip attacks, if any. They got our Town Hall 9s taken care of pretty, pretty easily. Uh, compared to what we see nowadays and then uh, left a few town hall tens but that's pretty much expected nowadays uh, we're seeing a lot of town hall tens left up in these wars and then they couldn't quite get that one town hall 11 uh, we did the same on their town hall 11s the difference was the town hall tens uh, had two fewer three stars uh, we're able to get all the town hall nines cleaned up but really the story for us i think was having to use so many dip attacks we had to use i don't want to throw a number out because i can't estimate it but if I had to say maybe like five or six dip attacks on, you know, on these Town Hall 9s, and that really hindered us because it made attacks very scarce. So I think given what we had, our, you know, our heavy hitters did a pretty good job, our Town Hall 10s, Town Hall 11s, and uh, working with what they had and keeping it pretty close to the end of the war. I had a pretty bad war. Um, I think a few other people did as well. And, you know, it happens, but um, we'll look to move forward and, uh, hopefully we can bounce back next week. You know, we still have, uh, we, I think we're one and two now, but we still have quite a, f a while before, uh, we have to worry about, you know, the tournament coming up. Uh, I believe the regular season is pretty long, so we can still bounce back next week. Um, let's take a look at a few attacks. The first one by Black Ice and, um, I want to show some of these Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 11 2 stars because these are crucial and we're seeing better and better Town Hall 11 bases these days. Uh, the One Hive War, they had a lot of great Town Hall 11 bases and then um, War Whales had some solid ones as well. So this is becoming a very important uh skill for a town hall 10 to develop and we actually have a few uh or at least one town hall 10 i can think of off the top of my head who really specialize in this and that's what they kind of do they're looking to use both their attacks to two star these town hall 11s which is a good thing because you want to get those people to be able to specialize so that way you have some reliable uh we'll fast forward a little bit for that golem to go down so that way you have a reliable um uh, source of those two stars because they're so important in these wars and we're seeing consistently not all the town hall 11s be two stars some of the bases are difficult um i might make a video on how to make a good town hall 11 two star base just a quick one because i can't give that much advice i'm not a town hall 11 myself but having attacked those bases and seen them in war i can give some tips so let me know if you want to see that video i'm thinking about doing it just some of the basics for a town hall 11 anti two star base uh, but yeah anyway comes in with the queen walk on one side the uh, king and the golem and the bowlers on the other and the valks up the gut that's typically what we see for these two star strategies uh, that and dragons, so those are the ma two main things you're defending against when you're building a Town Hall 11 base, and uh, Black Ice did a good job with the funneling, the Valks went straight in, got the Town Hall, even though it's pretty isolated in that middle compartment, and then he gets a few more buildings, which will get him up to about 50% uh, before everything goes down, almost gets that eagle, but not quite, uh, not that it matters that much, his troops are pretty much dying out anyway, but he has the 50% secured, and I think he'll go up to about 53, 54 uh, before his queen goes down and that's it so um, nice attack to black ice we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit as the queen goes down and uh, yeah 57 percent uh, very solid for a town hall 10 all right let's move along um i i do have a town hall 10 v town hall 10 three star to show i want to show one dip attack first and um i wouldn't show them if they were you know an easy thing to do but it seems like um both sides uh in pretty much every war we see fails um sometimes half of these are fails sometimes more we've had uh you know fewer than half of these go for three stars so it's not easy by any uh standard especially with miners being uh pretty much not usable at town hall 10 town hall 11 and maybe you can use them at town hall 11 i'm not sure even those level four miners aren't nearly as effective as they used to be so because of that we're not seeing the consistency that we used to see and uh, dip attacks are have been you know 
nerfed as well. Um, not the easiest thing, easiest thing to do, having trouble talking tonight. But anyway, I wanted to show this attack, uh, not because it, or not only because uh, it was a solid example of a good dip attack, but also this plan I think could have worked for a Town Hall 10. That's how good it was. Uh, right here, he's just using the queen. You have the exact same level 40 queen if you're max Town Hall 10. So nothing a 10 couldn't do at this point. Um, all that he has, I guess, is the max troops. Um, being the Lava Hound, the Bowlers, the Balloons, that stuff, and the Warden, obviously, which makes a huge difference. But still, this is a really good plan. I think it might have been able to work for a Town Hall uh, 10. You can see coming in here with the Queen, gets the uh, air defense taken out. Uh, as soon as those CC troops go down, drops the Rage to keep the Queen up. And then on the other side, comes in with a few Bowlers, the King and the Warden. Uh, just to bite off a big chunk of this base, get the Inferno, get the Queen, uh, other important things. I think he gets that um, air defense as well, which is also important. Uh, going down to, I think, just one air defense and then the Inferno Tower left up, which is pretty easy, especially when you have two Lava Hounds, a ton of balloons, a Freeze, a Rage, a Haste. He had so much left over. Um, so assuming he had got the same value from his Kill Squad, I don't think he needs those level 7 balloons or level 4 Lava Hounds. Uh, nice Freeze, maybe a tad early because it does wear off relatively quickly and uh, they have to deal with the Inferno. But besides that, getting in there, getting those Teslas, the Inferno, the Rage definitely helps. And uh, that Lava Hound still tanking, ton of balloons left up, has all three of his heroes, uh, healers, everything. So uh, great job to, this is Baz, Boz, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if this is someone else's account or what it is, but uh, either way, great attack, has a haste and two wall breakers to swag. Uh, nice stuff there. We'll go ahead and take a look at that Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 3 star. Then have a few nice Town Hall 9 attacks to show. So, um, this was huge. Uh, really breaking the the ice for us at Town Hall 10. It's, I mean, we've struggled a lot, and this was a crucial point in the war. Pulling off this 3 star gave us a lot of momentum, and uh, we were down for a while. It looked pretty bad. Then we kind of bounced back uh, with about uh, one between one and two hours left, I think, and we couldn't quite finish it off uh, to get fully back into it, so they ended up winning by two stars, but this was a huge turning point, I think, and it definitely gave us a lot of momentum. Real like, nice attack, because this base, you know, it does have lower level point defense, but it has the level two Infernos, the max heroes, um, and those max air defenses, and this air, is an air attack, so uh, not the easiest base to three star by any means. Any Town Hall 10 base, regardless of what level it is, as long as it has those Infernos, really, is hard to three star these days. Uh, so it comes in here with the typical kill squad you see for these, uh, uh, what's it called? Hobo, uh, no, Bo Laloon. Gobo Laloon, whatever you call it. Um, getting in here, getting some air defenses, getting the Inferno Tower. There is that one air defense up uh, that he might have been able to get had his troops gotten a little bit deeper, but that Lava Hound is going to halt the Queen. And because of that, there's two air defenses left up. Uh, quite a few, you know, Archer Towers, that kind of stuff. But you can see pretty much everything's uh, kind of congregated around those air defenses. So the Lava Hounds, he has three of those, will be tanking. Uh, there goes the level, yeah, these are all level three. I think he brought bowlers in his clan castle or something. So there goes the Lava Hound, the first one. It'll go down pretty much immediately due to all the traps and uh, damage coming at it. But the second one's right there to pick up where the first one left off. Has the haste to keep everything moving. And uh, really those, I think it helps that everything is mainly Town Hall 9 level, um, especially, you know, for the the balloons that are getting targeted where the Lava Hounds aren't tanking. Good Freeze gets that air defense and the Inferno. That's huge. And when you're building a base, you want to try to keep those air defenses a little farther away from your Infernos. Don't let them get the great value on that Freeze, especially because this strategy is so popular right now uh, for three-star attempts at Town Hall 10. Got a little bit close here, actually. Um, you can see that Lava Hound's going to delay that um, that Expo for a while. Yeah, trying to think of the name. Going to delay that Expo for a while, but it will pop, and that won't quite kill the Expo either. So he needs that balloon crash. Boom, there it goes. Takes out that Expo. Um, from now, it's a race against the clock. I saw this one live, actually, and it was pretty darn close. I think about six to eight seconds were left on the clock when he got that last Dark Spell Factory. So nice attack to Filio, very crucial, uh, really gave us some momentum. And uh, let's move on to some Town Hall 9 action. Okay, what is this, 19, I think? Uh, yeah, 19. All right, 
Um, this was a, in this strategy, by the way, we saw a ton of this. Uh, this, I don't know what you call it. There's an acronym that people use, uh, but I can never seem to think of it off the top of my head. So it has the Pekkas, the Valks, the Healers, and the Bowlers, and the CC typically has those four rages just to pretty much rage up everything because the power of this strategy is keeping your troops together and you'll see how it ends up working here in a in a few moments uh, but that's a good place to start the queen walk just get in there get those heroes doesn't even need that rage probably uh, because it was just the heroes pretty much and they were under poison anyway so typically you don't need that um, but goes ahead and drops it anyway, no big deal. The queen, I'm not sure which direction she was supposed to go. I assume he wanted her to go the way she did go, but, um, no way to know for sure. Anyway, though, she's going to make her way over to the left here, taking out defenses. Um, now she can't reach that air defense, so that's going to be an issue. It'll take out a few of the healers, but, uh, by then she's already gotten some great value. Uh, the CC troops come out, takes out that archer tower. He will need to use the ability, though, because the baby dragon, the wizards... If, if there's a CC like that that has at least a baby dragon or some Valks or something, you can pretty much count on having to use that ability. Uh, but here come the P.E.K.K.A.s. Here come the healers on those P.E.K.K.A.s. Uh, the first one will go down. Doesn't get the love from those healers. But the next one is being healed along with the king. Uh, the, air, the healers are starting to drop to that air defense. But he, as soon as those troops enter the base, uh, they'll take out that air defense and preserve, I think, like one of those healers. Or maybe it'll go down. Nope, it's still up. Barely, but it's up. Um, or, no, it goes down, actually. Uh, so anyway, still has, like, three healers, though, um, from the other part of the attack, because he brought so many. And look at that, everything's bunched up, that's exactly what you want. You want those healers to do the splash heal on all those troops, and then they step up into that rage after the main troops go through it. Uh, Valks, Bowlers, Heroes, everything, just all at once. Moving through the base, doesn't really matter where they go, but he does drop a few wizards on the outside to keep things inside the base. Better they target defenses than the trash buildings. They do kind of break out on the outside, but by then, you know, there's like no troops left up. That was a nice baby dragon we kind of missed. He dropped that down for a few defenses. Uh, some nice touch there. Just two cannons. We'll go ahead and go times four uh, as they take out that last cannon. Awesome attack. This strategy was used so much. Um, been working very well for a lot of different people. So, yeah. Um, let's see what we got. Two more, I think. We got 21. Uh, this is Nev, and uh, another nice attack here. And this isn't a strategy that we've kind of been seeing after the poison spell buff, or not the poison spell buff, the skeleton spell buff, uh, because it enables you to not have to worry about the defensive queen as much. Uh, those two balloons didn't quite do a whole lot, but it was important because guess what he's testing for, the CC. Uh, he's going in there to lure out any air-targeting CC troops. He drops those balloons because, you know, if there's a golem, a lava hound, he doesn't even want that to come out. It'll just be an issue for his heroes um, because his heroes are never going to go in range of, that, of the CC. So that's, that's something you want to look for when you're attacking a base. Um, if you think you can do an air attack on it, especially like a three or four lava hounds attack, kind of a mass air attack, if that CC is offset, um, don't even worry about attacking it. You know, you can just uh, ignore it, drop a few balloons, make sure there's nothing air targeting in there. And if, there's, if there is, your heroes can deal with it. If not, just ignore it. And uh, you might think, okay, well, what if the queen's near there? You have to take out the queen, don't you? Well, not necessarily. You don't have to take the queen out with your heroes. You can use your heroes on the other side of the base to take out an air defense like Nev did. Then as your balloons, as your lava hounds make their way towards the queen, when the time is right, drop down that poison spell. Don't drop it down at the beginning because that way all the defenses will be targeting the, uh, the skeletons. Drop it down as the balloons, as the lava hounds are making their way over. That way everything's distracted so, so the skeletons can kind of slip in there as they do right here. Also has the nice poison to keep the queen a little bit slower so she can't react to those skellies. Uh, the lava pups help out um, along with the skeletons, take out the queen, um, so doesn't even have to worry about them at the beginning of the attack like you would traditionally. And his queen somehow resurrected. Uh, I don't know how it happened. She's still alive somehow, some way, and she helps with cleanup as well, assuming she doesn't hit a small bomb in the outside of the base. So yeah, nice stuff to Nev. Um, like I said, this strategy has really been taken off. If that CC is offset, you know, drop a balloon or two. Make sure there's no wizards or baby dragons that will hurt your balloons. Um, and if if you're all good to go, go ahead and just send those air troops in and uh, crush the base. That Scully spell is very effective for taking out the queen. All right, last attack. Um, what do we got? 27... 
this was Crazy Spitz. Crazy Spitz. Um, kind of a nice traditional, I think, a stoned hobo attack. Uh, so always nice to see. Dropping down to three golems. Uh, Wizards has the poison for the queen, which I like. He dropped that down early. Um, there's so much damage in that area. That first golem already busted. Uh, so definitely try to reduce that. You can see right there, kind of a wall breaker fail. The... Uh, you gotta drop a test wall breaker, then wait and let it go off if there is a small bomb. But I think he had a few extra wall breakers for something, maybe just brought a lot. Uh, I guess he was just, uh, expecting to fail because uh, he had like two extra even after the first wave. So gets into the base, has the jump, um, has the rage. The king goes down relatively early, which is not a good sign typically. But uh, the level 30 queen, the uh, golems are tanking, and the bowlers under rage can do quite a bit of damage to the base. And I'm not zooming out quick enough. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the hogs making their way on in. I think there is a double giant bomb spot. No, there is not. It looked like there might be one, but no. Um, no double giant bomb. The hogs are still moving. Is there one here? Yep, there it is. Uh, but doesn't kill them all, and that heal gets them back up. So that's the, th the thing. If you want to have a double giant bomb spot, I think you're going to typically want to have uh, some a few like small or regular sized bombs however you look at it, around there to do an extra 42 damage to those hogs because that'll typically do it. You know, have two bombs there just for good measure. That can take out a group of hogs, um, put a few wizard towers around there as well because uh, you don't want to have a double giant bomb set and the hogs not die because uh, that way it's like a single bomb because uh, you can still heal your hogs through it. So really it's not getting a whole lot of value if they're together unless they actually kill the hogs, if that makes sense. So anyway, uh, Crazy Spitz took the base out pretty handily. Nice attack there. Um, that's going to do it for this war recap, guys. Hope you liked it. We had some fun in this war for sure. Not always the funnest thing to lose, but it's, uh, you know, it's a good experience either way. And uh, we're just, you know, trying to have some fun playing this game, even though we do get... Um, you know, a little wound up sometimes. So like I said, good job to War Whales. They, you know, had a solid war, especially on the Town Hall 9s. Did a great job. Um, you know what? We're going to bounce back next week. I promise we'll get a win. I don't even know who we're facing, but I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, we're going to bounce back and crush it. Not sure if I'll be in the war. I am pretty busy coming up, so that might affect if I'm in the war, as well as some of the videos on the channel. So just make sure that you, uh, if you don't see me uploading as often, it's just because I'm a little bit busy. Uh, so thank you guys for all the support, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.